Hi, I'm Kai Hongchang from Odesk Research. Today, I'm excited to share our paper, Learning to Simulate and Design for Structural Engineering. This is a joint work with my coworker, Qing Yi Zhen. So first, let's talk about why structural design is important. According to these statistics, buildings and construction caused uh, nearly 40% of global energy-related carbon dioxide emissions. Therefore, if we can optimize structural design of buildings, then we can use less construction materials, which leads to not only a reduced cost, but also a decreased carbon dioxide emissions. This is the current workflow of structural design. An architectural drawing is given to structural engineers, and they will first create skeleton design, which defines the location of vertical columns and horizontal beams. The next step is cross-section size design, where structural engineers assign cross-sections for all the columns and beams. This complete design is fed to structural simulation software. To satisfy all the building codes for stability and constructability reasons, structural engineers usually have to iterate the design multiple times. This process is laborious and manual. The scope of this work contains cross-section size design and structural simulation. Let's take a deeper look at the size design process. So structural engineers usually have a list of cross-sections to choose from. So instead of uh, one uh, continuous variable, these are uh, discrete options. Load cases are defined in structural simulation, and we're particularly interested in drift ratio which is defined as the ratio of relative lateral displacement of a story to story height. So let's take a look at uh, different methods. So this is the uh, traditional method where we have structural engineer to uh, create this uh, cross-section size design, which is fed to a simulation software, and we end up with an optimization loss. So as I mentioned, this process is manual, slow, and completely relies on engineers' knowledge, experience, and intuition. To automate this process, we can use a GA to output an optimal size design. So a genetic algorithm is an iterative algorithm which constantly calls um, the simulation software for evaluation. So this is also very slow. Uh, in, th in this paper, uh, we propose uh, training a neural sizer to output the optimal size design in one shot. However, there's a, still a challenge of using a simulation software and it's also non differentiable So to avoid constantly calling the uh, time-consuming structural simulation software, we pre-train a neural sim. And given the differentiable nature of NeuroSim, the gradient of the optimization loss can flow through the NeuroSim and update the NeuroSizer parameters. So how are we representing the building structure? So there's a unique characteristic of building structure. So it has a discrete components. It is usually a large at scale, and it also has strong connectivity relations. Therefore, we can represent building structure as structural graphs. So here, all the columns and beams are represented as nodes in a graph. So if uh, two columns or beams uh, are connected uh, in the design, then two nodes are connected through an, uh, edges. Here, we also have uh, one pseudo ground node. So all the bar information are stored in the as uh, stored as a node feature, uh, which contains the positions of two endpoint locations. If a bar is a column or beam, um, the one half vector for the cross section type, and some auxiliary information for load condition. Here, I want to point out an interesting analogy of uh, force transmission versus the message passing in the graph neural network. So, if we have a load applied on this beam, then uh, this load will carry down uh, vertically in the gravitational direction. So there will be uh, one message that is passed uh, along this uh, red line. So in the, other, 
in the other direction, where the seismic forces come from the ground, it can also uh, propagate all the way to the top story. So due to lack of uh, real data, we use a ran uh, heuristic algorithm to randomly sample uh, building geometries. And uh, we use Autodesk Robot Structural Analysis, or RSA, software to uh, generate data. So now let's take a look at uh, NeuroSim, which is the surrogate model for structural simulation softwares. NeuroSim starts with a node encoder, and then it goes through this uh, message passing mechanism. And in the end, instead of using one MLP decoder, uh, we use a uh, we design a structured decoder, uh, which mimics the algorithmic structure of the uh, drift ratio definition. And this uh, structured decoder gives us uh, two outputs. So one is the drift ratio output, which uh, which is the prediction of the drift ratio uh, values. And the other is the classifier output, which classifies if the ground truth drift ratio is larger, a larger than a limit or not. So in the paper, we show that having this uh, multitask loss improves the performance. So here's our result. Our neural seam shows high accuracy, which is 98%. Um, and compared to RSA software, NeuroSim is 300 times faster. Next, let's take a look at the Neurosizer, which takes in the skeleton design of a building and outputs the optimal size design. So similarly, Neurosizer starts with a node encoder, goes through the message passing, and then um, since we have this uh, per node output, uh, we just use a standard MLP decoder with an output function being the gumbo softmax. And in the end, we get uh, the cross-section output. And uh, given the optimization problem, we have one objective and three constraints. So our objective is to minimize the total loss of the material uh, for the from the columns and beams. Drift ratio constraints requires all the drift ratios of all the stories to be less than a limit. And uh, this is for the stability uh, reasons. And we have another constraint, which is the variety constraint, uh, which sets the limit of maximum number of different cross-section uh, cross used. So here we limit um, uh, maximum of six cross sections used. So this is for the constructability reason. And in the end, we have this uh, entropy constraint. Uh, this is this comes from the uh, maximal entropy reinforcement learning to avoid uh, quick overfitting at the beginning of the training process. So here we uh, do several experiments. We have uh, different uh, drift ratio limits, and we also test on different objective weights. So the results shows that Neurosizer can satisfy the constraints well, and also um, have a low objective. Neurosizer also shows a uh, strong generalizability. So it has a similar performance uh, to buildings of different uh, number of stories. Moreover, if we train only on four to seven stories, then uh, it also shows generalizability to extrapolated data. So this is the visualization of the uh, of the neurosizer cross section output, and we show these uh, visualization to professional structural engineers, and they think uh, these are reasonable, and they uh, did point out several insights. Um, that the model learns. So first of all, columns are generally thicker on lower floors. So uh, lower flo floor columns uh, needs to support the uh, masses on the top. Second, a uh, neural sizer also learns to prioritize using stronger columns over beams. So this is uh, mainly because of the uh, drift ratio constraint, because a column plays a much more important role um, to minimize the drift ratio. 
And the third is uh, the, the results shows uh, similar patterns and strategies across different buildings. So structural engineers will probably do the same given the optimization problem. Last but not least, we compare Neurosizer with genetic algorithm. Let's first compare uh, the runtime uh, of different methods. So Neurosizer only takes uh, 10 milliseconds. And uh, if we run genetic algorithm with RSA as the evaluation function, then after 24 hours, it only runs uh, 30 iterations. However, if we replace the RSA with a Neurosim, then it only takes 30 minutes to run 1,000 iteration. Next, uh, let's take a look at the, uh, the quantitative performance of the Neurosizer. So metric one and two shows the percentage of improvement. So these two results shows uh, the using the Neurosizer seed shows uh, improvement not only in the beginning of the optimization, but also in the end of the optimization. So metric three is the number of iteration needed for neural seed results um, to defeat the uh, random seed uh, optimized result after 1,000 iteration. So the maximum iteration is 128. So compared to 1,000 iteration in total, it, uh, neural sizer seeding provides uh, eight times speed up. So in conclusion, uh, we propose an end-to-end -end learning pipeline for cross-section size design optimization problem in structured engineering. We train uh, two models. One is NeuroSim, which acts as a surrogate model for structural simulation software, and it is fast and accurate. Uh, and another model we train is a Neurosizer, which uh, produces a qualified design comparable to uh, GA results. So. Um, in the end, uh, I want to say that uh, given the underexplored uh, deep learning application and structural engineering domain, I hope our paper can appeal more research interest in this direction so that deep learning can bring broader impact in different aspects. Thank you.